Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. This year, this summer, actually, we decided we would go through the entire book of Revelation, but then COVID happened and uh, churches, you know, the services stopped and started and stopped and started. And so uh, we kind of took a little break, but I didn't want to just miss it and ignore it. So I thought, you know what? We'll put all these Revelation studies online. And so we're breaking it up into really small chunks, just a couple minutes here and there. Uh, you can always go back and watch the previous ones, or you can start right here. Uh, you're more than welcome to pick up your Bibles and read along. We're still in Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 14 with a letter that Jesus is dictating to the church in Laodicea. Now, Jesus has seven letters to seven churches, and this is the last one last one, you could say Jesus saved the best for last. And uh, this one's a popular one. I think out of all the seven letters, this is the one we remember the most. It has a lot of very familiar um, passages, both at the beginning and at the end. And I'm kind of looking forward to doing this over the next couple installments. And like I said, we're in Revelation 3. We're picking it up at verse 14. It says, to the angel of the church in Laodicea, write the words of the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of God's creation. You know, all the letters uh, begin much the same way we write letters to people, uh, even today. You know, there's a to, who is the, the letter to, and who is it from? So we know the, the letter is to the church in Laodicea. And then Jesus says it is from the Amen. Now we say Amen at the end of our prayers, but I don't know that we always remember what it means. Amen doesn't mean the end. It means let it be, or it means so be it, or it is true, or yes. So Jesus is saying like, I am the, I am the let it be. I am the so be it. Because he then says that he is the faithful, right? The faithful and true witness, which is really his way of saying, I am the authority. Right? I am the buck stops here. I am the final word. So right away we get this idea that whatever Jesus is going to say to this church, there's no arguing, right? He is the last word. He says in verse 15, I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. Would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Ah, I told you. This is one of those uh, passages we, we remember. We've heard this one before. We've, we've heard this one in church before, and it's pretty straightforward, right? I'd ask you, I'd ask you if you were here, I'd say, well, what, what do you think this means? But I think, I think it's pretty clear, right? You know what this means. It sounds harsh, though. It sounds very in your face. And we say, you know, this is why, this is why I don't like reading Revelation, because... It's just not the casual, happy-go-lucky Bible stories that I like. I mean, I like stories about Jesus. I do. I like Jesus' teaching. But I like Jesus' teaching when it's more like about love and forgiveness and happiness. I don't, I don't know. The, Jesus says that I make him sick. That's not the Jesus I'm used to. And, you know, that's not why I come to church. I don't come to church because I want the preacher to tell me that I make Jesus sick. Right? I understand. But what is Jesus saying? He, he's saying that he wants you. He's really saying that he wants you. I mean, that's what this really says. He says, I want you and I want all of you. I want you and I want you all in. Not, not partially in, not just a foot in, not 10% in, 100%. That means when you're involved in this faith, involved in being Christ's witness here on earth, that you're in, you're in 100%. Really? I mean, all in? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've just never really pictured myself as being one of those Jesus freaks or those fanatics that carries their Bible with them everywhere, you know, that always talks to people about God. I mean, I mean, what, is, what does God expect? I and mean, come to church, what, every single week? Yeah, come to church every single week. Well, I don't know. What about football? What about hunting season? Yeah, I know. Tithe? 10% of my income, like 10% all the time, and, and, and sometimes give above, like what the scriptures say? And what about, what about when I need it? 
What about when I need my money? Or what about when I want to buy something that I want? I mean, read my Bible? I don't have a lot of time, and I don't really like reading. Isn't it okay that the preacher just reads it to me? I mean, pray? Pray all the time? The Bible says pray without ceasing. Can't, can't I just pray when I need something? And tell other people about Jesus? I mean, evangelize? I mean, I will, I guess. I'll share my faith, but really only if somebody asks me. I don't want to bother anyone. This is what Jesus is saying. He says, I don't want casual Christians. I don't want Christianity to be your hobby. I don't want it to be just one of the things that you do. In fact, Jesus says, pick one, right? He says, pick one, either be fanatical or be nothing. He says, either be excited and hot and on fire or be nothing, be cold, be standoffish. Jesus says, be one or the other, on or off, but not in the middle, not casual. Jesus says, if you're casual, you make me sick. If you're casual, you make me puke. And you know, you're right. The stories about Jesus loving things and forgiving things, we love those. And it seems Jesus does love a lot of things. And he does forgive a lot of things. But you know, one of the things that Jesus just doesn't like is hypocrites. People that say one thing on the outside, try to present themselves on the outside as being one thing, but on the inside, they're really different. And Jesus says, I see you, right? He starts that way. I know your works. I know you. So the mask you're wearing doesn't work. You say that you're all in, but Jesus says, you're not, you're casual. See, the good news is, even if our affections for Jesus and faith have gotten cold, Jesus still says at the end of this passage, I still stand at the door and knock. He hasn't given up on us. And he's not going to let us be lukewarm. He's not going to let us be the middle. So I would say, if you feel lukewarm, if you don't feel all in, then open your heart. Open your heart today and ask him to transform your life. Tell Jesus that you need a kickstart. Tell Jesus that you want to be all in and ask him into every detail of your life. Your time, your money, your family, your work. Invite Jesus all in. Tell Jesus that he is worthy for you to give 100% of your life. Give all of you to him every day. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.